What's going on guys, it's Dale here from Demsec and today we're uh, hacking web browsers. So the first person I'd like to thank is InspiredEU on Twitter, his link is down below. And what he does is absolutely awesome. He's a graphic designer, but what he differs from with different graphic designers is how little information I gave him and how, what an awesome product he gave me. So you may have noticed on my Twitter that I've got a new logo and I'm not sure I've put it on my YouTube channel yet, but I do have a new logo and I'm gonna be putting it up. But the kind of information I gave this guy, I'm not a particularly creative guy when it comes to actually logos, anything graphic design wise, I'm not particularly creative. But this guy, I said, all right, my name's Demsec and I do computer security. And that's literally all I gave him because I had no idea what I wanted, to be honest. I just wanted him to come out with something awesome. And pff, he definitely delivered. He provide, he came out with uh, the logo that you see on my Twitter. So definitely check him out down below and um, tell him that I sent you. He may cut you an awesome deal. So in this episode, I'm gonna be covering beef. And not only is beef a very tasty meat, it's an awesome tool which allows you to take over a web browser. And why would you want to do this? Well, it's more the simplicity of it. All you have to do is include a bit of JavaScript which points back to your beef server, which we'll set up in Kali Linux in just a bit. And through there, whoever browses to that website, you then can take control of their browser. You have a huge list of exploits, and it's kind of like the Armitage or Metasploit for web browsers. And those two actually go hand in hand. From having a hooked web browser, there isn't loads of malicious things you can do, but it's what that then allows you to do um, almost directly. For example, what we're going to be doing is firing up a uh, Java payload attack. So obviously the usual user will get someone up saying, oh, this website requires Java, Pl please click OK to run it. So we then run it and you take control of their computer through a interpreter session. So those two really go hand in hand. So if you haven't learned about interpreter or Metasploit, I'd really recommend going back and checking out some of my tutorials. I'll put some links somewhere. Just go, go ahead and check those out before we get into this. So without further ado, let's get into it. Beef is really awesome, and I can't wait to show it to you. Okay, so here we are in uh, VMware. I'm running everything through VMware purely for uh, demonstrational purposes. But you could be running this in uh, on your actual laptop, and uh, as you see, I've got a few machines up here, but only two are running. I've got my Kali machine, obviously, and a Windows 7 machine, just to show how uh, effective this attack is. So, in the Kali machine, we're both we're going to start off by uh, starting a uh, beef. So it's quite simple. Go up to Applications, Kali Linux, System Services, Beef, and then Beef Start. And then it'll pause for a second here, and then then you can close that. Beef is a service that runs in the background. Then we we'll go to System Services, Beef. Uh, no, we don't. We go to Exploitation to Tools, Beef XSS Framework, and then Beef. This is go up on a web browser with. Uh, beef and the default username and password is beef and beef so you can see I've been playing with this a while earlier so we've got some offline browsers but this will work exactly the same so to actually hook someone into beef uh, they have this demo page here so we'll run this and we'll see when I refresh this page even Firefox on Linux can be hooked um, it's extremely powerful in that respect it's not restricted by web browser or anything like that you can just go straight in and uh, hook any kind of web browser. Um, any web browser I think can be hooked. It's not necessarily any browser can be exploited in all the different ways. But this is a link that I'm gonna to go to. But um, for those who want to create their own pages, the only thing that actually makes the difference is this script here. I'm obviously changing this IP to your beef host. Um, but if you were to put this on any web page, so if you wanted to do a phishing attack, uh, you put that code in on your copied website and it would allow you to hook into it. So not only if you were pulling a phishing attack could you get their username and password, you could actually go ahead and uh, exploit them there. So I'm going to close this and I'm going to go head over to my Windows 7 machine. I'm going to be using Internet Explorer for this uh, example just because I'm using a Java payload. 
and a Java payload allows you to unload a interpreter session onto the Windows machine. So from the web browser, you can actually go ahead and take control over the whole computer just by clicking on the link. So, so if we go back to Kali Linux, you can see we've got a hooked browser and it's Internet Explorer. If we go to commands, as you can see, there's loads, absolutely tons of stuff in here. And I would recommend you go through and have a definite play with all of these because there's all kinds of cool stuff. But well, what we're focusing on today is this Java payload. So we're just going to load this up here. But before we start this, we're going to have to go back to our old friend, uh, Metasploit. So I'm going to open up MSF console. And as always, this is going to take a second to load. And the way this is going to work is this is going to embed a Java payload into this page. And um, it's going to request them to accept it as it does with all unsigned Java payloads. But if you hid it well, like if you say copied um, a YouTube page and then said, oh, to view this video, you need to accept the Java applet, um, then it's probably going to catch some people out. Obviously, there's no definite way to catch people out, but there's enough tools in here where it's absolutely awesome at some of the stuff you can do. Like in, um, yeah, you can start recording audio, you can upload files, you can list files on their system, social engineering, some really cool stuff. In fact, let's demo some of this before we start. Um, this will actually, so say if the target was on Facebook and you can find out with, uh, there's, a tab, there's a tool in here which shows you what tabs they have open. Um, if we execute this on the target just to demonstrate, you have to wait a second because it is doing uh, pulls back to the system. And I've been noticing that I've been getting these errors recently. Yeah, it's active skin for console. So uh, if we just refresh this page and then we rerun that exploit. As you can see here, we've got this really weird login thing. Which, when it's not in Internet Explorer, I tried it in Firefox earlier. It actually looks really convincing. It says, Facebook timed out, Facebook timed out, please log back in. And if the user was on Facebook at the time and you made that pop up, that would be really a, a good way to get their credentials. And it does actually feed the response back into here. But as you can see, there's no results because I haven't typed anything in there. But back to what we were doing. We've got uh, MSF console open now. So what we're going to do is use multi slash handler. And then we're going to pick the exploit that we're going to use. So set payload. And that's why it is a payload, not an exploit, sorry. Java slash meterpreter slash uh, reverse underscore TCP. And as always, show options. So we know what to set. So it needs a local host and a local port. So I'm going to set my L host. And if you want to find out your local IP in Linux, just type I, oop, if config. And as you can see here, this is my IP address, so I'm just going to copy and paste that. It's also available here if you want to uh, write it out from there, but that's the way you find it in Linux. Set L host to that, and I always change my L port just because lots of um, intrusion detection systems, if you were to be doing this inside of an actual corporation, We'll actually look for port 4444 because it's obviously the standard port and automatically blocks stuff like that. So let's be creative and change it to 6666. Then we're just going to run it. So what this is doing now is listening for a Java connection on that IP address. So we can go into Java payload now. Type in our IP address. And the port is 6666. And we're going to hit execute. We're going to go to the Windows machine here. And wait, basically, as you can see, we've got a little uh, notification, well, cursor showing us that something's happening in the background. And it may not ask me to accept it because I've already accepted it, which is why this is so powerful. If they've accepted it once, you could keep getting them with the same attack. So as you can see, I've not been notified this time, but usually the user is notified. And as you can see, we've had a interpreter session opened. You can type question mark to see the kind of stuff we can do. So I'm going to click. I'm just going to run screenshot so you can, so that screenshot's been saved there. If we go to places and home folder, uh, this one was the WZ and yep, you can see what we've got running there. And you can also type shell to get a shell on that machine, IP config, and you can see this IP address matches the one we were attacking. So we can exit that 
an InSign interpreter. There's loads of things we can do. We can start editing files. You can upload files to the system. Um, yeah, it's a really cool tool, but pretty much by them clicking on that link and uh, accepting a Java payload, which is easy enough to trick someone into clicking, you've now got full control over their computer. You can record the microphone even. It's pretty crazy stuff. So we're about halfway through, so I'd like to uh, give a bit of a shout out to DigitalOcean. Have you heard of DigitalOcean? You should have. They have absolutely awesome. I use them personally. I don't get paid to use them. I use them out of my own money. And they are absolutely awesome. For $5 a month, you can get a VPS in over f in three different locations. In fact, I think they've got five now. I have mine in Amsterdam. And I know that EU bandwidth is expensive, which is why I think this is crazy. So for $5, you get a 512 megabyte RAM VPS with 20 gigabyte SSD, SSD, um, tier one bandwidth, gigabit, pff, and you get a terabit of transfer a month, all for $5. And the best part is they charge, late, charge you hourly up to the amount you've put into your account. So if you're paying for that tier one VPS and you put in a $5, they're never gonna charge you any more. And what's awesome is because they're charged hourly, if you just wanna try something out quickly, you could end up char being charged like one cent for what you use if you just wanna quickly spin up a VPS and try out your, try out your new program. So if you're interested in DigitalOcean and you really want to help me out, use the link down below. It's my referral link, and uh, I'd really appreciate it if you haven't checked out DigitalOcean. Remember to click the link down below, and have fun. For $5, you cannot go wrong at all. So you've seen how beef works, and that may have scared you into thinking, oh, I must never trust any link my friend gives you. Which, if you want to go fully tinfoil hat, is probably a good idea but there's a few things you can do to stay safe online. If you get a link sent to you in an email from someone you don't recognize and you don't recognize where the link is heading to, obviously go ahead, don't click it. It's a bad idea. The second tip I'd give is if it is a bit.ly link or something like that, you know the shortened ones, go out and check one of the links down below again. I'm giving you a lot of links this episode, I'm sorry. Um, Check out that link and it actually allows you to expand the bit.ly link to where it's actually going. So if someone sends you a bit.ly link saying, oh, check out this awesome cat meme. And obviously you're going to want to click that because who doesn't love cat memes? But you can put that link into bit.ly, into the bit.ly expander. And it'll tell you where the link is actually going. So if the link is actually going to somewhere you really don't trust, if you haven't been there before, for example, don't click it because your browser could be hooked. Another way to... Um, almost protect yourself is if you believe you've been hooked close your browser as quick as possible and restart your machine because that way if your browser is hooked it's only hooked while your browser is open while that tab in fact is open so if it is this kind of attack close the tab and reboot your computer as quick as possible and you may save yourself and if you do think you've been hooked and been exploited there's always a hundred percent tinfoil hat method of you know, nuking your hard drive and reinstalling your operating system. Don't recommend that one, but you know, it's an option. Anyways, thank you for watching. Uh, you can check me out on Twitter, link down below, link on screen if we can still do that. Um, yeah, go ahead and check it out. I actually have a Spreadshirt shop store now, so if you want to check out some cool t-shirts, go ahead and click the link that's in the description. How many links in the description do you need? Um, <laughs> Yeah, check them out. I've got some awesome t-shirts and it all helps me put together Demsec, the show. Thank you for watching and uh, see you next time. Bye-bye.